At the end of 2009, 21-year-old Wang Haibing, a girl from a village in North China's coastal city of Yantai, was diagnosed with pulmonary arterial hypertension, a kind of rare disease which has no known cure. In a last-ditch attempt at finding a solution to the girl's illness, her parents were keen to involve the child in new medical trials co-organized by the Shanghai Pulmonary Hospital of South China's Shanghai City and a U.S. pharmaceutical company. When we first found out about my daughter's condition, I was devastated. She is my only child and the future of my family. We were willing to try anything to cure her. Before volunteering their daughter to take part in the medical trials, the family were presented with a 41-page contract. The document covered stipulations on volunteer rights, potential side effects and general guidelines on compensation for research-related injuries. Wang Haibing began clinical trials at the beginning of 2011. Sponsors of the program approached the girl with the latest drug, which was undergoing trials at the time. On April 16, 2011, no more than two months after joining the volunteer program, Wang passed away following respiratory failure. My daughter had taken part in the trial for no more than two months before she died. We were all devastated and in shock when we heard of her death. Even though I knew the chances of her leading a long and happy life were slim, I really believe that this treatment led to her premature death. Sun then filed a lawsuit against the hospital and the U.S.-based medical company, claiming that the drug had resulted in their daughter's death. After a long fight, they received a disappointing result after the local court of Shanghai City rejected their appeal, citing lack of sufficient evidence. The Shanghai Pulmonary Hospital also refuted their claims, insulting that there was no evidence to suggest that the new drug had led to Wang's death. I just want some justice for us and for others who have had the same experience. My daughter wasn't the only one. Hundreds of thousands of volunteers contribute to medical progress every day. What I want is for the hospital to acknowledge these people. There are currently around 2,770 registered clinical trials underway in China. Experts say low costs, a low threshold of volunteer recruitment and a large number of researchers make China one of the preferred countries to conduct clinical research. It's said that these paid clinical trials have become a popular means of making money among young people. Clinical trial volunteers may face some risks. On the one hand, their private information may be made public by hospitals holding clinical trials. On the other hand, whatever new kinds of drugs have unpredictable side effects, and some side effects can be fatal to volunteers. As an expert who has been engaged in clinical trials for many years, Guo knows more than most about the industry. Guo's Clinical Trial Institute conducts around 10 clinical trials each year. The trials require around 500 healthy volunteers or those who are already suffering with an illness. During each trial, a healthy volunteer can get paid up to 3,000 yuan, which is around $500 in compensation. Guo explained how there are currently around 500,000 participants taking part in clinical trials across China, and the advent of drug-related deaths is not uncommon. In recent years, more and more multinational corporations have arrived in China, as it seems to be the most constructive country to conduct these trials. On the upside, it also means that Chinese patients will most likely be the first to use the latest and most advanced drugs. However, on the downside, there is still a distinct lack of protection for patients and participants. At present, the leading and most pressing topic is the need for laws that regulate clinical trials and protect the volunteer rights. Maybe there should also be economic and criminal sanctions for those who play key roles in causing the deaths of trial participants. Liu Yujin is the lawyer who took on Wang Haibing's case. He says that the protection of volunteers' rights and interests relates to many other aspects, including ethical morality. 
Although China has promulgated so-called good clinical practice in order to regulate the practice of drug trials and protect volunteers, there are still many issues relating to the lack of protection of these people. All we have is Article 43, which states good clinical practice in China. It stresses that the sponsor shall provide volunteers with insurance to cover harm or death during or as a result of clinical trials. This insurance is required to cover the expenses of treatment as well as financial compensation, but it does not include harm or death as a result of medical accidents during treatment. But there really is a lack of detailed rules to put the article into practice. Efficient infrastructure to facilitate and monitor clinical trials is also essential. In China, the Ethical Committee, organized by three parts medical professionals, lay people, and lawyers, is in charge of the ethical reviewing of each clinical trial. However, the committee has been pointed out as being lax in fulfilling its duties. I think it's necessary to strengthen supervision on clinical trials. Now that there is such a large group of clinical trial volunteers, we need a law or system that can protect their rights. However, both in terms of law and mechanism, we still have a lot to do. Now, Wang Haibing's parents continue to fight for their right to compensation and draw more attention to this issue.